I turn to my friend from the NFL Media Group, NFL Network, future Hall of Famer. You'll check him out tonight on NFL Total Access prior to the Bengals and Giants finishing up Week 10. That's at 7 Eastern time. My friend LaDainian Tomlinson right here on the yes, show. Good to see you, LT. Great to be here, man. Thanks for Great coming here. Absolutely. What are you thinking of when you see Ezekiel Elliott doing what he's doing right now? Wow. I, I see a guy who's um, – the game has slowed, slowed, slowed down for him. I think. Um, has it ever been fast for him? Is the question? Well, I, yeah, yeah. If you think about his first couple of games, I felt like he was pressing a little bit. He was trying to feel the tempo and the speed of the National Football League. Mm-hmm. The regular season, you know, preseason obviously is different. That first game is Giants different. Giants game, yeah, and Redskins it's, game. It's, the tempo was much faster, and I felt like he was pressing a little bit. But now I'm seeing the guy who understands the tempo of his offensive linemen. They understand him. And he understands what the defense is doing out there. That's the biggest thing. When he hits those holes and he's running full speed, he doesn't have to slow down because he knows what he's looking at and he understands the scheme. And uh, he just he's on the tear right now. Let's talk about that, uh, LT, because I think a lot of the conversation you're hearing about today – is that touchdown that sealed the deal for yeah. Dallas last night was easy right. because the offensive line is excellent and the Steelers' defense is susceptible. Right. Walk, walk, walk everybody through that final play and yeah. what 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 you th- you know was going down. Well, with that, it, you know, I think the Steelers at that point they were all up in there expecting Dallas to run, and so that's actually the easiest defense to run against if you're a runner. Because once you break through that first wave of defenders, there's no one else back there. And so it looked like he started play side and eased backside a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, that I would imagine on that play, if I seen it again, the guard probably had a great cutoff block and he eased right between maybe the backside center and guard. But no one no one's there, Rich. If those guys are up in there and they hit the wrong gap, that happens. You know, I, I, I had one like that. I think is it was uh against the Raiders uh, in overtime, probably 0-3 maybe. Walk-off? Uh, yeah, walk-off, overtime, you know, just like that. They but, were all up in there. I hit it. What's Safety that f- was back there, but he did, he missed me. What's that feeling like? What's that it, like? Um, it's, it's a great, great feeling, especially when you're, at, when you're at someone else's house, especially when you're at the Raiders' house. <laughs> You quieted it yeah, down. The yeah. black hole was a, it, it was, was like a library. Is that what you're well, saying? Well, they they weren't quiet. They were throwing stuff at <laughs> us. You know, it was crazy. But that's the way it was when when you go to Oakland and you win. Mm-hmm. Oh, the bus is getting egged. You know, they're throwing stuff on the way out. They're flipping you the bird. And you like that? Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's what you that's what you play the game for. Well, I mean, he's off to a, a Hall of Fame tear. And, and by that, I mean he joined Dickerson and Adrian Peterson is the only backs to have 1,000 yards rushing the first nine games. Wow. You have won an MVP in this league from this position. You know how difficult that is. Yeah. The only rookie running backs to ever win the MVP award uh, are Jay, uh, one, one Jay Brown, oh. one Jim Brown, James mm-hmm. Brown. The godfather. Indeed. And uh, Earl Campbell. Mm-hmm. That's it. Do you think he's the MVP of this league? I think right now, yes, he is. Um you know, but Dak is going to get some votes. And so at the end of the day, you know, can he continue on this pace? And certainly the offensive line is good enough to do it. But um, but Dak's the making rookie, some of these but, throws, though, LT, right? I mean, yeah. da- oh, he's no making question. these throws, there's no doubt. No question. But the number of times that that the quarterback is supposed to check out of the run play, but he ran it anyway. Yeah. And – Ezekiel's getting the five yards on first down. He's getting the touchdowns against Cincinnati to open up the right. second half. Right. right. That's where I'm thinking Ezekiel is the MVP. Yeah. And if you've got to choose one. And I, I agree with, with you. But here's the thing, Rich. In order to be an MVP at the running back position, you have to do something really, really special. Now, right now, I, I think he, he is the MVP. But the rookie wall, I'm telling you, as a runner, sometimes – you know, it just happens. You're just not used to the, the volume of carries that many games. You know, once you get around week 12, 13, 14. Well, how does that, what does it feel like? You feel it on a Monday? You feel it on well, during a game? Well, your body just don't, don't get back as quickly. You know, you, you just, 
you know, by Thursday, Friday, you, you, you feel tired still. You know, Saturday comes around. Usually Saturday, you're ready to go. Like, you're, you're, you're chomping at the bits to get out there. But when I was a rookie, around week 13, boy, I felt like, you know, Saturday, my body didn't bounce back. You know, I still felt tired. My hmm. legs felt tired. You know, and I had a lot of carries. If you look back, I think I had about 330-something carries. Your rookie My season? My rookie year, yes. Well, you guys North looked that Turner up, was the offensive coordinator. Who was? North Turner. He was the offensive coordinator. And so he knew he, he, he's, he's coordinated for Emmett. He saw you. He gave it to me. <laughs> he, gave, <laughs> he gave it to me. <laughs> what, what do you think happened with Norv in Minnesota? What do you think happened there? Um, you know, I really believe – the dynamics of the relationship with Pat Shermer, um, Sam Bradford, I don't think it was too good. And I, I think Noah probably felt undermined in a way uh, with trying to deal with Sam. You know, Pat has a relationship with Sam, previous relationship. Sure, last year in Philly, right? St. Louis. Was and so I just season. think Noah felt kind of, you know, like he, was, he wasn't welcome anymore. Huh. And, and I, I, I'm, now, I don't know that for sure. It's just my hunch. Just things I've heard, you know, from outside sources. I, I think I, I would, I would venture to say that that's probably the reason. Well, I was hearing that it was him being told which plays to call, on occasion. Well, to the point where he's just like, okay, that's not North. Like you can't now. Now, if that's the case, then that'll drive him away. I remember. And I, you know, I hope I, I hope Norva's okay with me saying this and having this conversation. He and I had a conversation after my rookie year, and he wanted the head coaching job because uh, they were firing Mike Riley after my rookie year. And I went in and talked to Norva at the end of the year. He said, "LT, I want the job." You know, he said, "But if if they hire Marty, I can't, I can't be here." You know, he won't let me be me. He won't let me mm -hmm. do what I want to do, and. So Nor very much wants to have his imprint and run the offense and do his thing. And if he starts to feel he's been undermined or, you know, he's, you know, something like that is going on, then I, I can see him leaving. He's not going to put up with somebody telling him what to call. I mean, this man has been around, you know, he's called countless games. He understands how to attack defenses. The Danian Tomlinson here on the Rich Eisen Show. What was the number that he had for carries? Uh, 339 rush attempts rookie year, 2001. How many does Ezekiel Elliott have right now? Through nine games, he's got 1,006 <laughs> yards. I believe I have the exact number for that down pat. But how many carries does Ezekiel Elliott have now that the Cowboys are 8-1, and one, man? Wow. They're the only eight-win team in the NFL? Wow. Right 198 rush attempts for Ezekiel Elliott okay. thus far. That's getting so up on the that's, odometer, huh? That's getting up, Rich. But Ohio State didn't play just eight games, you know? That's I true. Mean, that, that's true. In a Big Ten but, schedule plus a Big Ten championship game, you, you're, you're already at a dozen games right there. But it's much more physical than the National Football League. Yeah, don't you want to, <laughs> like, curtail those so he's got gas in the tank for the playoffs? Absolutely. And and I thought that's what Alfa Moore was, you know, that's what he was brought there for. Sure. You know, and so Alfred is really, I mean, Alfred probably averages maybe three, four carries a game. But they did this with DeMarco Murray two years ago. Yeah. Even, you remember when That's he had that true. broken hand? That's true. And they went to London to take on Jacksonville, and they're like, okay, so when they're up on Jacksonville <laughs> right. by halftime, they'll right. sit him down. They played him. He's getting carries and touches in the fourth quarter. That's what That's what the Cowboys do. Yeah. That's what Jason Garrett does. Yeah, That's but. they do. But at the same time, I think, you know, at that position, DeMarco Murray, he was a he was a veteran guy. He understood what it took to go 16-plus games, mm -hmm. playoffs, you know. And so Ezekiel, he doesn't know. And that could be a good thing, though. Like rookies, sometimes you don't know what you don't know, right? Well, Danian Tomlinson here on the Rich Eisen Show uh, set. We're going to take a break, come back, have another conversation with you. Lamar Jackson comes up right after you. He's on the phone. Uh, Graham Rahal will be here in studio hour number three as we'll get fully into what happened in the college football weekend. And there's your phone calls. If you're on hold, stay on hold, and it'll get to all of you. Uh, right here on this very busy Monday edition of Danian Tomlinson back here on the Rich Eisen Show in a matter of moments. 
Big week here on Audience. We mentioned uh, with Strahan in hour number one of Religion of Sports debuting on Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, uh, ICE will be uh, coming to an audience television screen near you. A great new original series from AT&T giving you the story behind a diamond that you've never heard before. An original series from Antoine Fuqua, the director of Training Day and Magnificent Seven. It's a high-impact crime drama that follows the Green family as they plunge into the underbelly of the Los Angeles diamond trade. It's on AT&T's exclusive audience channel, channel 239. Debuts Wednesday night at 8 Eastern and Pacific, starring Jeremy Sisto and Donald Sutherland on that show. Donald Sutherland, by the way, a big Dolphins fan. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, we had we had Andy Garcia last week talking about he was at the opening, first game of the Dolphins. We had Kelsey Grammer last month. He said he was there as well. And Sutherland, he goes way back in the South Florida scene. I got LT right here, LaDainian Tomlinson. The Chargers took one on the chin yes. yesterday. That's the type yes. of game they need to win. Uh, they no need question. to win that one at home. But what's going on with the Chargers, do you think? Well, I, I honestly think – all the injuries they have had this season. I think it happens they, every year, it but seems. I, right? But here's the 16 guys on IR. That's a bit ridiculous, right? And so you're forced to play a lot of young guys. And young guys, they don't have enough experience to be able to close games or be able to, you know, win the crucial battles, you know, at certain times in the game, third down and five. You know, you need to get this first down. Not enough experience. They haven't been in those situations enough to get the job done. And so you're going to have these these ups and down moments. But but Philip, you know, you just you can't throw. You can't throw those picks. You can't throw them in the fourth quarter and he knows that. He does. Philip is is the, you know, one of the greatest competitors I've ever played with. And I when he put his glove in his mouth, I, I knew what he was thinking. What do you mean? You remember at the you know, mm-hmm. he put his glove he's he probably was thinking, I just blew this game for my team. And it's hard for him to swallow that. I guarantee you. And Drew Brees had a, a another guy who obviously you go way back yeah. with in the day. He had a, a beautiful pass with a couple minutes left to what it looked like to beat the Denver Broncos. Right. And then that extra point goes down. Uh, it looked to me like that uh, the Broncos stepped out of bounds running in for it two is. points, yeah. but it play stood as called, which means I, if I am – um, a coach, my guys are only wearing white shoes from They're now the on. They're white shoes, absolutely. Only wearing white shoes because you can't tell if they've stepped out of bounds in a way or not, right? Um, do you think that that play, that somebody's allowed to leap over the center, not use him as leverage, you can make incidental contact, Yeah. that you should be, should this play be legal? Um, I think if that play is legal, then you should be able to have someone there, you know, to right behind the center to block him. But then how do you how do you so it would be like the punt where it would be somewhat offset and yeah. then the kicker needs to kick over your own right. guy? Yeah, I mean it's weird because if that's the case, Rich, you just get the guy that jumps the highest on your team and just have him do that. Everybody's gonna have Everybody's a designated gonna, one to do it. No question about it. And I guarantee you somebody like Bill Belichick, who's always thinking ahead, he's gonna probably get somebody that, you know, six six the Jump well, over the Seahawks already have two guys that can do it because right. Bobby Wagner did it the the That's the right. game that Cam Chancellor was injured. That's right. They've got two guys. They got two guys. Well, on punch, you How have a personal that? protector. And now, whenever we were growing up, there was one guy back there as a personal protector. Now there's three in most punch. Well, but in punch though, but with punch though, the the idea when you kick it is to kick it as high in the air as fast right. as possible. Sure. Right. Whereas if you're you got to drive it, you've got to drive it sometimes yeah. for a field goal. Right. I think that play should be made illegal. Yeah. The league, the the league should just because as you point out, everyone's going to have someone who can do it. Yeah. And suddenly, what what are we kicking field goals for anyway? That's kind of hard because the center has no chance. No he's chance. snapping the ball, and by the time he's trying to raise the guy's over. Well, him I guess already. it's the, it's up to the guard to maybe elbow the guy down or elbow him off or right. elbow him off the point of trying to land. That's tough. Where well, you're supposed to step? Most of the time, you step mm-hmm. and you kind of do this as a guard inside outside to shove right? out right. But that guy, he times is so good. You know, it's hard to stop that play. The Danian Thomason here on the Rich Eisen Show. You finished fourth in the Heisman voting when yes. you were at TCU. What do you think of Lamar Jackson, who's calling in here in a few I, minutes? I think the kid is fantastic. He's 19. 19 years old. That's impressive. To play how he's playing, I mean, he he's carrying his whole team. 
I mean, you think about it. Most of the time, he leads the team in rushing. He obviously, you know, leads the team throwing the football. I mean, he has great numbers throwing the football, you know, but the kid is dynamic. And you know what? Truth be told, we haven't seen anyone like him since Michael Vick. I mean, I think we can say that. And even Michael Vick said this kid is way the hell ahead of him mm -hmm. when he was 19. Could you have played in the NFL when you were 19? Absolutely not. No way. Why? I just wasn't physically developed, mentally or physically. I mean, you think about it, you're 19 years old. You know, that's the time when you start to really, you know, carry your weight. You start to develop muscle tone and you know you start to feel really good about mm -hmm. you know where you are but at the same time you're just not ready to be able to to go out there with with men who move as fast as they move and big as they are to be able to withstand this a season mm -hmm. now you may be i mean 19 years you can do it a few games right but can you withstand a full season of a, in, the nfl life at 19 i don't think so ask ladanian thomas in the poll question uh, Brockman, go for it. Hey, pretty good weekend of uh, games, LT. Uh, what was the best game of the weekend? Pitt upsets Clemson. Iowa upsets Michigan. USC upsets Washington. Cowboys over Steelers. Seahawks over Patriots. Yeah. yeah. I, I would have to say the Cowboys over the Steelers. Even more Seattle going to New England. Yeah, I mean, Short that was week. no question. That was impressive. You know, but most of us thought that the Steelers – their back's against the wall. They need a win so badly. You got, you know, two-time Super Bowl champion Ben Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown, perhaps the best receiver in the game, Le'Veon, the best runner in the game, perhaps. You, you have to win that game, right? And then you got on the other side with the Cowboys, you got two rookies coming into Heinz Field. They're not going to win that game, surely not. But they do. They did. They yeah, do. but I mean, but the 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 Seahawks. Did you think but that they, was pass interference at the end of the game no. last night? Not on no, Cam. because uh, here's the thing. I thought Cam healed his ground. He was there. Gronk mm -hmm. initiated the contact. I think we can all say that he extended his arms, mm -hmm. and I, I was I was totally fine with the no call. Were you surprised totally that fine. they didn't give it to Blunt? No, the I way wasn't. he was scoring. Mm -mm. I wasn't surprised. You're gonna put the, you're gonna put the ball in Tom Brady's hand, and at that and also you go to perhaps your best player, and that's Gronk. Gronk is their best player. Man, you, I mean, Tom Brady, Gronk. What a battle last night. Could Seattle uh, Seattle versus Dallas, who do you have? It's Ooh. in Dallas. It's in Dallas. Ooh. Who do you have? Because Seattle right now that's, that's with Dallas, it, 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 I'm just throwing that's that out there. That's a good there. one. Who, who do you have in that one? The way Russell Wilson is playing. He's out, lights he's out right now. He's playing out of his mind. And here's the thing. I thought it was intriguing that – you know, during the Super Bowl, the game came down to New England's defense making the play on the goal line, right? Mm -hmm. This time it was Seattle's defense making the play on the goal line. Four straight, you know, stops. That's that's pretty that, – I mean, I think we can say that Seattle's defense is back because there was a point there when they lost Cam and Michael – they were they were struggling a little bit, mm -hmm. but they're back. They have their mojo back. And Bennett's coming back too. Before I let you go, because Lamar Jackson's calling in, and again, if you're on hold, we'll take your calls here in the Rich Eisen Show. We still have a more than half of it to go. Uh, what's going on charity front for you? Before I well, let you go, um, on Friday we have our annual Giving Thanks with LT, where we give out 2,100 Thanksgiving dinners. Um, that's going on on Friday. That's one of our biggest events. And so we're looking forward to that. So go to LadanianTomlinson.com, L-A-D-A-I-N-I-A-N, Tomlinson.com for more on that. You still have an animal sanctuary? I do, Down Snug Pet Resort in San Diego. So, Check it out. So, again, you just bought this tract of land and you, you rescue animals and give well, these? Well, I mean, we have a whole, you know, we, we board dogs. We, uh, we have a veterinarian hospital inside our facility. Um, we train dogs, police dogs. We I mean, we have a whole whole business that operation along with rescuing dogs of course good for you yeah lt i love that yeah. i love that thanks for coming in please sure. come keep coming back absolutely whenever you have me you i'll got be it. here and again uh, lamar jackson may be on hold right now is he on is he on right lamar's now? on hold yeah oh, is he is he actually there he is actually there. you want to okay. patch him over yeah yeah you, you, quick hello to you want to say hello to sure him? okay hold on a minute here lamar jackson are you there sir Yes, sir. Okay, I've got Ladanian Tomlinson right here before, because I'm going to talk with you when we come after the break. But you got to 
Hey, Lamar, man, I, I just wanted to tell you, hey, love watching you play, man. You're so you're an exciting player. Hey, keep grinding, okay? Keep working hard. Keep looking hey, up. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that coming from you. <laughs> Absolutely, man. There you go. All right, Lamar love Jackson, you, man. stay right, stay right there. That. Okay, Lamar, we're going to put you back on hold. Lamar Jackson, Heisman hopeful, if he's not already the front runner for sure. Back here on The Rich Eisen Show in just one minute. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.